Good evening. Let's talk about a very special plane today. And that is the ATR-72. You know, I always feel like the ATR planes are kind of underrated in a way. But I mean, at least they are not talked about much. So let's do that today. Now about the ATR-72. Actually, not that many people know where it comes from. Actually, ATR stands for Avion de Transport Régional, which is a French aircraft manufacturer. Yeah, this airplane is French. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but aviation is quite big in France. You know, there's not only Airbus, but there is ATR, there is De Her, which makes the TBMs. Wasn't like flying invented in France as well? I don't know, but that is another story. Today, we're gonna talk about the ATR. And this plane came out in 1989, and it's still being produced. You can still buy a brand new ATR today, even though it does look a little bit outdated, but no, this is actually one of the more modern versions of this plane, I guess. Yeah, this is the cockpit. This plane is not outdated. On the outside, it might look outdated to the non-informed eye. The front looks a little bit weird, but no, this is a top spec modern plane. Now, this plane is pretty damn successful. Ever since 1989, when they began to produce this plane, 1,105 of these have been built. That is definitely not bad. You know, that's quite a bit more than some top spec Airbus planes. Now, something that is obvious is that this plane is a turboprop. Yes, we do have normal propellers, but these are like super turbo propellers, which is why they're called turboprop. This plane is almost as fast as a jet after all. But to be honest, it's a little bit cooler than a jet because you don't often see turboprops, especially compared to jet engines. So yeah, this was just a solid regional airliner. Now we have already taken a look into the cockpit. This kind of does look like a Russian plane a little bit because Russian plane cockpits are always green. This one is blue. Kind of a mix out of a Russian plane and an Airbus. But other than that, we have a glass and steam gauges mixture of cockpit. So this is modern enough to fly, I guess. <laughs> well, maybe let's take a look at the cabin. That could be very interesting. Now, right now, this cabin is not very well lit because I don't know how to turn the lights on. But as you can see, the standard cabin is like a two by two configuration. Very typical of a regional turboprop airliner. And as you can see, we are spawned into a flyby livery. You know, Flybe used to operate a lot of these planes. You know, a lot of turboprops. They also have the Q400s. Very, very cool. Now, actually, let's go ahead and take off, I guess. The plane is pretty quiet in the cabin, isn't it? All right. This is actually a pretty damn short runway. I underestimated that. But we have actually taken off and we are airborne without any issues, actually. And we are running just fine. Yeah, that was really a short runway. But this plane didn't have any issues with it, as you could see. Yeah, the ATR-72 is able to operate at some very interesting places. You know, it operates in Asia, but it's also used in America and Canada and in Europe. It's pretty much used all around the world at the most special places. All right, so now we have traveled all around the world from Switzerland to the Caribbean. Yes, we are about to land at St. Barthélemy Airport. Let's just go ahead and do that. Landing gear down. I actually don't think that this turboprop has speed brakes, which is actually pretty damn common for turboprops. The Q400 doesn't have that feature either but it doesn't matter. Yeah, let's check the landing abilities of this plane. <laughs> yeah, this will be a little bit interesting. Ouch. All right, no worries about this landing. Jesus Christ. Okay, all right, we are at the beach and this is where our passengers can actually exit the aircraft. You know, they can just go for a swim. That was a very safe landing. Only thing left is to open the door. There we go. Now let's check out that landing. It wasn't that good. Yeah, this approach is extremely challenging and oh my goodness. All right, here we have a very broken landing gear. Oh my goodness. And here was the second touchdown. Boom, left propeller gone and then the right propeller was also gone then well that was a very successful landing wasn't it i mean we stopped so it kind of counts doesn't it all right yeah let's try this once more again actually aside from this pretty much crash landing we could see that the plane did stop very quickly this is quite a tough plane i mean again it is operating at very interesting places and conditions. So this is definitely pretty damn cool. Let's try this once more. By the way, this plane does not have a side stick. It does have a yoke, but you just can't see it. <laughs> 
All right, hard landing, but a safe landing it was. And a stop. I'm actually kind of impressed. We still have like half of the runway left. I could have even gone for a smoother landing because I did force a firm landing still because I rather want a hard landing than an overrun, definitely. But this was fine enough. The ATR is a very solid plane. Or is it? Because that's actually the question of today's video. Well, about the ATR, there have been several issues before. Or let me put it straight, there have been many accidents. Yes, the safety report is not that good with the ATR. For example, since 2000, there have been 16 accidents. Let me just tell you, since 2000, only 20 years have passed. 16 accidents within 20 years is really not good. Yeah, the last ATR-72 accident was in 2018 in Iran. Another one in 2017, 2016, 2015, 2015 again, 2014. There just have been a lot of them. And most of them were actually fatal. For example, this very famous dash cam video, that was also an ATR-72. That actually lost control, I think. Now, normally on this channel, I don't really like talking about fatal stuff because I'm trying to make this a little bit more of an entertaining place, but that is just needed. Actually, this crash didn't turn out to be super, super bad. Most of the people on board did survive. Now, I don't know how you can survive such a crash, but that is actually quite legendary. Now, a lot of people do criticize the ATR for being an unsafe and dangerous aircraft. But the question is, is that really really true because only because there have been accidents doesn't mean that an aircraft is not safe even though it can be a little bit suspicious for an aircraft to have more accidents than another aircraft of the same type let's actually go ahead and take off let's see if that works this aircraft is actually solid or well, is it reliable though <laughs> as you could already see the places where the, all the crashes happened were very well exotic can you put it that way you know there was a crash in iran in the middle of canada in the middle of nowhere in pakistan in indonesia in taiwan in laos which is somewhere or in russia yeah these don't seem like first world countries to me with the exception of Canada and maybe Russia. But the thing is the ATR does not only operate at these places. Actually, there have been pretty much no crashes in first world countries. Which is where I'm asking, is it really the aircraft's fault for being unsafe? Or is it the airlines that are unsafe? That is actually a very interesting question to ask yourself. And I think it is actually the airlines that are giving the pilots not proper training. Because most of these crashes have been piloting errors. Um, a lot of problems were actually actually icing. And that's what the ATR had its main issue with, because it doesn't have a very good de-icing system, I guess. And you know, you don't want to mess with ice on your wings, and especially not on your control surfaces, because these can definitely lead to loss of control or loss of lift even. You don't want that happening. Very nice. I don't know if you can call icing a human error, but I think it might be. It's a human error for flying into icing conditions with your plane. So that does count. But yeah, this plane is actually not bad. In fact, I really, really like it. I'm actually very much into turboprop planes, probably simply because you don't get to see them a lot normally. This plane is pretty damn nice, even though it has some very interesting characteristics and its main competitor, the Q400, is a lot better. It it is actually better. Oh goodness. Actually, that was not bad. That was quite a good takeoff. We are actually airborne. Yeah, maybe I can talk a little bit about the Q400. Yeah, this is the Q400. It is actually a lot more famous than the ATR plane. And honestly, it is a little bit better. It's a little bit safer. For example, it can run better of only one engine. You know, if one engine fails, that is a little bit better. And in general, the Q400 is a little bit more modern than the ATR, even though they're both great planes. Even though I personally have found the ATR to be a little bit easier to fly in the simulator, but that is another story. Let's just go ahead and take off. Oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but to draw a conclusion about the safety concerns of this aircraft, would I recommend to fly the ATR safety-wise? Yeah, totally. I mean, if you have an airline that is totally unsafe and has a very bad safety record, then that airline might actually be able to ruin 
any plane, no matter how safe. You know, it's not always about the plane. It's also about how trained the pilots are and how well the planes are actually maintained. Now, welcome to Lukla. This is probably a very suitable place for the ATR-72. Now, this plane has also been used in military before, actually quite a lot of times, and it does seem to work great, which just shows how solid this plane is, actually. All right, that actually worked out okay. Thanks to this valley, we can build up some speed and eventually maintain a stable flight, so that is good. And yeah, maybe it is a pretty loud plane, I can imagine that, especially if you sit right under the wings, or more or less under the engines. That can be a little bit uncomfortable, and I can imagine that the cabin is not the largest, which makes sense. But either way, this plane is great. And yeah, again, personally, I like turboprop planes a lot. You know, I fly the TBMs, the PC-12s. They all have a nice personality. Let's land now. Oh, goodness. Safe landing is a safe landing, after all. All right, so what do you think about the ATR is the question. Would you fly it? Personally, I would love to fly it, but there are not that many airlines in Europe operating it, and I don't really live at a very remote place, so I don't really have a lot of opportunities to fly this plane, but either way. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night, and also goodbye to the ATR.